people. <laughs> So welcome to this podcast today and we're looking at Jesus's parable in the vineyard and everybody getting paid the same and so we'll just go straight into the gospel read by Anna. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time Jesus told his disciples the parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing Agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Going again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And then at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why do you stand idle here all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. Then he said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his ste steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the householder, saying, Those last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But then he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to I choose to give to this last as I give to you, and I'm not allowed to do what I, what I choose with what belongs with to me, or do you berate my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. The gospel of the Lord. I had like one point of that of, of like whenever you so he um the householder went and he collected the people at different hours during the day and whatever so that's kind of like um i saw it as people joining faith um and starting to believe so no matter when you start to believe in god and when you your eyes are open god loves you the same even if you haven't known him for as long as others have you still are loved the same. Yeah, and quick definition. <laughs> so denarius is the type of form of, of money that was used in Jesus' time. And then I will go on to my point, and my point is about humility. So a lot of what I have been praying about and thinking about this past week is a lot of humility. And that was the strongest message I got through through this this reading today is that us as Christians often put this point where we feel like we're better than other people and better than other Christians because of how much we work in the church because we do this and we we don't realize that God's love is priceless so you cannot get more than priceless <laughs> that's impossible like eternal life priceless how do you get more than priceless so that person that's maybe not doing as much but has their own personal relationship with god it's not up to us to judge them or think that we are better because we do this and we do that and um and i think that again jesus always calls us to humility and just with everything and what we do in the church, how we read certain scripture, how we understand it. It is so important to be humble and understanding and loving, especially towards other Christians, because we Christians can sometimes be quite horrible to each other. Why? Because. And I think that calls to humility. <laughs> and I think that call to humility and understanding and acceptance is something that's very strong here because at the end of the day, we all get that priceless gift as, as Christians. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really good points you guys have brought up, Ruth and Anna. I also think it's important to be humble in the work we do and not necessarily just the work 
for God, but just in your work in general. Like, I think often at times we forget that when we work, we, we work with the wrong intentions. Like you work just for the money. Um, like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just in for the pay or they want the glory, like, hey, I did this today, or they want the sympathy, like, oh, I worked so long, like the guys, they complained in the parable, working in the scorching heat. It's like having a job working 24-7 for two days on the trot. Um, so a lot of people do that, and they, they humble about it. Um, it's not like the hours you put in, it's the work you put into those hours and who you do that work for. You need to, it's important to remember to do that work for yourself and because you want to help people you enjoy what you do and it's like doing the work for god it's important that you do that work for him not to be praised in what you do to be like okay here's this person i'm going to help them i'm not going to expect them to pay me back i'm not going to expect people to praise me for helping them you need to do it with being humble and with humility and just um yeah the full pay after that will be that you've helped someone and knowing that you've done the right thing it's the best pay better than a thousand denarii's um or a million bucks the, be the best pay is knowing that you've done something you fulfilled your happiness and you fulfilled the happiness of someone else um so i think that's also very important to remember yeah and i think there's so many different interpretations of this and there's so many different things that you can get from this and what i got from this was that the biggest message was that everyone gets the same everyone gets the same reward and everyone has the same opp opportunity as well. So the householder goes, keeps on going back into the market and he goes back and he asks people, he's asking, why are you standing here idle? Because they have the opportunity to go and find work and they seek work in their vineyard. And everyone has that opportunity and he keeps on going back and he keeps on giving the opportunity to people who don't actively seek it. Which I think is so cool because it means that it's showing that God loves you and he will find, he will look for you and he will put himself in your life. He'll present himself to you. And it's your choice to say whether, yes, I want to go work in the vineyard and I want the denarii, which is um, God's love and eternal life. And the same thing is that God's love and eternal life is the reward. And no one gets more eternal life than someone else because they were a Catholic for long, or Christian for longer. No one gets more of God's love because they, because they had like trials and tribute, trials to get to God. So people who've been Christians their whole life are equal to people who've recently found God. But what God is saying to us is that despite what we may think about other people's relationship with God, all of them are equal. And everyone gets the same amount of God's love and God's love is limitless and, and beyond boundary, boundaries. Um, not this. Beyond boundaries and borders. And but it's uh, so, how incredible it is, you can't even speak. <laughs> exactly. And I, I think it's just so cool that everyone has the same reward and everyone has the same opportunity. So I just, I just wanted to uh, say one thing that I thought of when I think it was Ruth's point that when she said like Christians don't a lot a lot of Christians or people Christians from the outside seem to not have humility and they used to they seem to think oh you'll be worthy when you find God. All right, perfect. And are you part of our Super Saver Shopper Club? No, I'm not. Oh. And I, that just made me think of um, when I was, I, I go to a Catholic school, and when I was in grade four, when we were doing our first Holy Communion, we, as Catholic little girls, were treated differently to the other Christian girls, because we were like, you're the special ones, you're the nice ones, we like you. But I, I, it is a Catholic school, but yeah, I just, that, that was just something I thought of, and it was like, it felt nice in the time to feel like, ooh, so exclusive, but like looking back on it, it, it was kind of wrong because it, it made the other girls feel like, oh, we're not Catholic, so we're not as special. But I think yeah. the humility of knowing that everyone is equal and everyone, whether they're Catholic or Anglican or Methodist or not even sure about God, they will get eternal life 
and God's love no matter what. And I just wanted to speak quickly about that idea of um, somebody help me out if I, I can't quite remember it was the idea of oh my 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 justice and my rules are not of this world I do not have the same thoughts as, as you um, something along those lines but it's it's kind of going back to this this idea um, my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not your ways. <laughs> yes, my thoughts are not your thoughts. There, that perfect. <laughs> um, and it goes back to this idea as when we turn and we think, oh, okay, we we are we are these Christians. We do all of these things, and we we have this idea of this justice, and we are doing great things. And we 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 we, we. And so on. Um, you just have to remember that we, how we interpret things and how we understand things and how we have our faith journey is not how God sees things. And to have this, this idea that, you know what, what I believe and what I've interpreted from this is the only way and the absolute truth of everything. And, and it, like what I've gone through is what it's God is. going to that point, yeah, it's like almost going to that point feeling so arrogant as if you are God and you could know everything. And I don't know, I just think it, it goes back to that, that humility, like humility and say, okay, well, I'm not God. God's ways are different. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, for me, what keeps coming to my mind this whole time is the um, one thing of blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. And directly that means that those who like, forgo all earthly rewards. So like, you know, they, they just don't hold on to monetary and uh, tangible goods on earth. They will um, be rewarded in the kingdom of heaven. And I think we can look at it also that those who are humble and they do the work and everything for God, not for the glory um, of others, they will be greatly rewarded in heaven. Like we will all be rewarded, but those who do that will just be it's just so much more like the love they will receive is just so much a better feeling for them than those who don't and i think on that um it just makes me think that it doesn't mean that you should always think that your work is bad or that what you're doing is is not good enough i think you're allowed to have that pride and that feeling satisfied that you've worked to your best but it doesn't but you shouldn't go and lord that over people and be like pathetic you didn't volunteer for <laughs> shelter for eighteen thousand hours this month disgusting like you should just be proud and satisfied in yourself that you work to your best and you are doing what you can to serve the lord um and also just always giving back always doing something for the church that gives such a reward within itself and, and we are lucky to the, the fact that we found um, a relationship with God early on in our lives because then it means that our lives, no matter how crazy they're going to be, there's always that little bit of comfort. There's always that steady rock place that holds us. Um, and, and that's the reward to be able to go with life and be a little bit less anxious and a little bit more focused and a little more at peace. And that's the reward you receive on earth and yes then maybe eternal life might be different and the person who comes later but they've had to go through so much of life without god um and so the people who've, who've gone through that and it's, it's not this that's not they better but it just means that for you and your life journey it, it's helped you um and in that sense i i suppose it's almost like it's just been a little bit of an extra extra add-on to know God. <laughs> yeah, and, and something that gives even more comfort is knowing that no matter what, no matter who or what tries, no one can take God away from you. No one can have that power over you because God lives inside of you. And holding on to God is your choice that no one else has any say over because God is in you and he is yours and you are his. Into that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I don't know if we have anything else to say. Otherwise, last little point. Okay. <laughs> if you ever feel lost or just overwhelmed by all the stuff that you have to be working in the sun 
like the, the hard the, the day's burdens and you have to live this massive Christian life and you have to do all this stuff and you have to lead people to God if you want to get into heaven and if you want God's love and eternal life. Just remember that at the end of the day, God is love. God is love in all of its expressions and in all of its different meanings and different ways of presenting itself as God is love and God loves you limitlessly and he is fair and he wants the best for you like in Luke 11 chapter, chapter 11 verse 12 I think he says if he has asked for an egg can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time he will not give him a scorpion will you he? he's not trying to hurt you in any way and just remember you are loved by God you were paying attention yesterday's video. Yeah. <laughs> I know that one. Familiar. Yeah, so I have a beautiful song that we will leave in the description called Look Up Child. And it's kind of this idea of humility and saying, okay, well, look up to God, surrender everything to him. So check that out in, in, in the description. And yeah, good Goodbye, beautiful people. And thank you Bye. for tuning in. Goodbye, butterfly children. <laughs> Bye, guys.